cave and I want to show you something that I just found today. In this video, we are going to take a look at the brand new 21 piece camping survival kit from Ozark Trail Walmart. Like I said, I was walking down the aisles, I saw this thing, and I thought, I gotta grab this and show you guys. And we're gonna look at this for the first time together. And I'm gonna go out in the field and we're gonna use and abuse what's inside this kit to see, is it worth $30? Stick around. All right, I always like to look for new gear that is affordable, um, that is budget friendly, um, that isn't junk. And I've done some different videos on stuff from I've gotten from Amazon. Uh, I did a video that is really a, one of my more popular videos of uh, Walmart gear that doesn't suck, that's for survival. Well, <clears throat> like I always do, I'm always perusing the camping, sporting goods section of Walmart, looking for stuff, seeing what they have. They've had a lot of clearance sales going on lately, and I was able to pick up some good stuff at good prices, but this thing caught my eye because I'd never seen it before. And I was like, okay, this is something different. And the price point, right around 30 bucks. Um, this is the packaging. Uh, it has a re uh, Velcro field on the front with a removable Ozark Trail <laughs> Velcro patch. Uh, I thought that was kind of interesting. Um, it says it's a 21 piece camping survival kit um, and a carry bag. So um, it is a Molly pouch and this pouch uh, appears to me like one of these standard IFAC pouches that you get, like uh, the, all the, you know, the basic um, cheap medical survival kits come in, like on Amazon and eBay and stuff. They were, they're always in these Molly pouches like this with the rip away panel. Um, <clears throat> so that is pretty standard. I thought that was unusual that they put it in this. Looks like we have 21 pieces. It comes with a 220 lumen flashlight an 8.34 inch folding knife with three and a half inch blade, folding shovel with built-in compass, 27.5 inch stainless steel cable saw, four fire starting helpers, two glow sticks, 550 cord paracord bracelet, water bottle hook, whatever that is, camping fork, whistle with sheath, pocket tool card, pair of scissors, carabiner, seven-in-one multifunctional pocket keychain knife, 13.1 foot of 550 paracord, a magnesium fire starter, mosquito head net with bag. So very unusual items, uh, kind of a weird mix. Here, let's see what we got. We have our head mosquito net, fine woven mesh, and it's a nice little carry bag. I like that. Nothing wrong with that. That seems to be pretty decent. And here is our paracord bracelet, and that has a compass built in. There's a whistle, and I've seen these before. This is a little mini ferro rod, and then that is the striker for it. I've never really messed with one of these, but we will we'll see what we can do with it out in the woods. I don't know. Here we go. Good old Ozark trail knife. That is a flipper. Oh, that flips out pretty well. Serrated blade, of course. These survival, cheap survival kits and survival knives always seem to have serrated blades. But there's, you know, there's purpose for that. That's good for cutting cord. Um, it does have a seat belt cutter or cord cutter built into the handle. And this appears to be a glass breaker, even though feeling that that is not very sharp. Um, usually they have more of a, a sharper point to them on the, the professional ones that I have little flashlight, the 220 lumens, which is not very much. 
A couple glow sticks, those can come in handy. Ah, look at this. A spork. Love sporks. And this one's really interesting. It has a handle. Oh, look at that. <laughs> Isn't that fun? A little knife in the end with a little bottle opener, but it's got the sheath. And then the sheath is a whistle itself, right? Look at that. Not the greatest whistle, but, and then a lanyard. Ah, ooh, here we go. Okay. All right. I can get behind this. These are like a, a jute um, type of cord that has been soaked in paraffin uh, or some sort of, you know, man-made accelerant. Um, so these are going to be your fire starters. These will probably work pretty well. I, I would be surprised if they don't. But, so that seems like a good, a good item to have. Well, this is the water bottle hook. So this is going to be for a standard um, drinking water bottle that you get like at the gas station or whatever, the disposable kind. That's probably what that's for. And then you can, you know, put that on your belt or on your pack or whatever and not lose it. So, um, not bad, I guess. Interesting. They said it was a magnesium fire starter. And I bet you dollars to donuts it is not a magnesium fire starter. It's probably just a very cheap um, ferro rod that is the standard, you know, you get these on Amazon for nothing, uh, Chinese made, they, they will c make sparks, but usually not great. There we go. We got a few, got to get that coating worn off, but it's, it, that's a ferro rod. Not, that's not a magnesium fire starter. That's a ferro rod. So it's actually a decent handle on it which is pretty good. And you got a striker and then a little length of cord to hold it all together. So we got that. Scissors, which I don't know. This seems kind of funny to me. These are like, um, <clears throat> they have like measurements written on it. These are almost like little kids school scissors. Like I don't, I don't see why I would need these at all. I mean, for a first aid kit, maybe, but still I wouldn't even, I wouldn't even put these in my first aid kit there. Those are pretty, cheap. Okay, here is our wire saw. Um, we'll see how that performs. Um, I won't say any more about that. A carabiner, which is just a very standard cheap locking carabiner. Nothing you can do with that really. Maybe put your keys on it. Okay, here is one of these little survival cards that um, you know, always come in kits. So this side right here, that's sharp. So that actually would probably make a better striker for that ferro rod. Uh, this has like a saw blade to it. And then, uh, I don't know, some of this other stuff, there's some measurement increments, but they're not, there's no numbers on it. Um, and then a, a whistle. Okay, now this is a, so we got three whistles in this kit. Okay, that's a better whistle. That's actually not bad. We'll blow that outside, but that sounds pretty good and that is easy to do and um, there's no moving parts in it, it looks like and it's stainless or not stainless, probably aluminum, uh, some kind of metal right there. So let's get outside and see what the $30 Walmart survival kit can do. As promised, we were out in the woods with the new Ozark Trail camping survival kit found at Walmart, $30. Um, I've showed you all the contents and I think you can tell what this stuff is all about, but we need to actually maybe test some of this stuff and see if it's actually gonna be perform. And then what we can do is, um, talk about some of the things I like and don't like about it. Um, and then maybe there's some things we can change to make it better. I don't know. The first thing that I found in this kit that I thought was actually a beneficial item was this head net. Um, it comes in a nice little stuff sack. Um, head nets um, definitely have benefits. 
keeping the skeeters off. And it has a cord lock on it. Get that around here. That way you can cinch this up around your neck. And now you're protected from mosquitoes, biting flies, things like that. But also with these head nets, you can collect debris, uh, do foraging with it. It can be a way of carrying stuff. And then also it can be even a pre-filter for water. If you have really dirty water that has a lot of stuff floating in it, particles, this could be the first line of defense um, of getting that water cleared out. So I think the head net is pretty cool. So having extra cord with me, is a benefit. Now this one in particular has a whistle and a compass and a little built-in ferro rod. So not bad. Pretty standard whistle, right? But the ferro rod I think is always the interesting thing because you know how are you going to manipulate such a tiny little ferro rod without busting it? It has a striker built in. And there's just not enough room for this striker to fit in between those two prongs. So it's really hard to get um, anything going. So this is not gonna be something you wanna rely on. And then the compasses, of course, in these are super cheap. Um, let me see if it's, actually doing what it's supposed to do. And it appears like it's, I think it's working. But of course, I think that's probably gonna develop a bubble at some point. They don't last very long, they're very cheap. But um, the fact that you actually have some nice, brightly colored orange paracord um, in a convenient carrying way, I think is good. Now, Ozark Trail Knife, right? Super cheap. Um, it's a flipper, it has a pretty good spring assist to it. The body of it is plastic, has a serrated blade, which is of course not the greatest. There is a kind of cord cutter, strap cutter in the back, and then a glass breaker. Um, the glass breaker just doesn't seem very good. It seems very dull, but I don't have any glass to test on it. I'm not gonna do it on my truck. But um, overall though, the knife has a decent feel to it. So let's mess with this a little bit and see what this does. And of course, that's the one thing that people forget about that the, a serrated blade actually does a pretty decent job with doing feather sticks. Um, that's not bad. The handle on this is pretty comfortable. It's not too bad. It's a little, it's got some stuff sticking out like that. The locking mechanism that's where you unlock it at, that sticks out beyond the handle. And I can feel that as I'm holding it. So, you know, using this long term, I'd want to wear some gloves with it. And we have the ferro rod. What's interesting about this is they actually called this a magnesium rod, and it is not. It is um, some sort of ferrocium rod. Um, what's nice about it is it does have a pretty decent handle on it, um, which allows you to grip it this way. It does come with a striker. Um, the cord's a little on the short side. I prefer my cord a little bit longer than that so I can do make it a little bit easier to strike the ferro rod. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this cord off. Try it a couple different ways. There we go. So actually I'm using the inside of that little bottle opener that they put on it. And then that part seems to work. Back of it doesn't work. And so. they provided a flashlight. <clears throat> I think the, it, was say, it said it was 220 in lumens. Um, it's a single double A, and it's a pretty decent little light. Um, what's interesting about it is it has like a focus ring on it, so you can make it wide um, or narrow, but it also has a couple different settings. So there's a strobe, 
and I think there's even a low. So it's not bad. Um, it appears to be metal construction, probably an aluminum body. It has a nice little pocket clip. And then this thing, which going over it um, in my office, I, I was kind of dumbfounded. It's like, okay, this is totally useless and there's just some weird stuff on here. There it is, right? You've seen these in lots of survival kits. All the cheap survival kits will have these in them. Different sizes, different tools. So there is a serrated scraper kind of thing. So actually you could probably maybe scale some fish with it. I don't think you're gonna cut much wood. Um, there is a sharpened side right there. It's actually pretty sharp. So I wonder if we take our ferro rod Maybe this is the better striker. Yeah, it is. A little bit. Still kind of hard. And oh, there we go. So there's your striker. Forget that thing. You can ditch that. But the the card says can opener, knife edge, screwdriver, ruler, cap opener four position wrench for various sizes of nuts and bolt head, butterfly wrench, saw blade, directional ancillary indication. I don't know what that is. Uh, I think it has something to do with navigation, but I'm not really sure. Maybe like positioning of the sun and getting a bearing that way. I don't know. It's got this little hole with lines around it. So maybe that's what that is. But, you know, there's no instruction on how to use it. Um, two position wrench, so there's all these wrenches, and a lanyard uh, key ring hole. So it's been super wet out here. Finding dry ground is pretty much impossible. It's pretty swampy back here. So you want to fluff this up as best you can so you have a better chance of catching a spark. Um, So we're going to hold there we go it started did you see that <laughs> um, it fizzled out pretty quick Let's see if that helps it was going for a second, then I think the wind probably blew it out. Wind is definitely an issue. Here we go. All in all, not bad. I mean, it, it sparks pretty well, especially with a, a good striker. Here we go, now that jute's really burning. Three more items. I put these together just because it made sense. So it comes with this little locking carabiner. Super, super cheap little carabiner. Um, obviously just a key ring kind of thing. Um, nothing you're gonna depend on, but it can hold a few items. Um, it did come with this whistle, um, which is interesting because it's metal, aluminum, and it's got two holes in it. Let's see if we get anybody to come, right? That's a pretty loud whistle. Not bad. And then it came with this pocket knife. Um, so we got another knife, um, which I don't know if we really need, but uh, it's kind of more of like a Swiss Army knife, so you got the small pen blade, uh, non-locking. We have, you know, bottle opener, can opener, screwdrivers. Um, there is a pair of scissors. <clears throat> I missed that the last time I looked at this. That's handy. I like scissors. They, they are great to have. Corkscrew, not needed. And then a Phillips head screwdriver, also probably not needed. Um, but uh, metal handle, 
Now they do give you paracord, um, but the problem is it's only 13 feet. So that's not a lot. Um, enough to run a ridge line, maybe, um, maybe lash a couple of things, but certainly not enough to do a lot of stuff with. This is a bare minimum. And then we have the infamous wire saw. Um, wire saws are marginal at best. Most of them are junk, super junk. Uh, there are a few good ones, um, but they are usually the ones that come in um, the Air Force survival kits uh, that are issued to pilots, and those are better. Split ring, you got the swivels, but here's the interesting thing. So there's the saw blade. I can run my fingers on that and it doesn't it doesn't cut them. So my thinking is, well, I know it's not going to be that an efficient of a cutter. It doesn't even cut my finger. Um, plus, these things are super cheap. Um, they break very easily. But there's a couple different techniques on how to use these properly, so we're going to test that. So with these wire saws, if you pinch them too much, that kind of creates the hot spot. Usually what you want to do is you want to move them out a little bit. Now this wood I'm cutting it's a little rotten I think but that saw's already binding up on it so you can't you can't pinch it too much you got to go back and forth and of course the other technique is actually building a frame and making a bow saw the other thing to do with these wire saws, instead of using the rings, is to run a couple pieces of paracord through them. And that way, it'll give you a more comfortable finger hold. You can see the cut. Here. See the cut? I mean, it, it cut, um, but man, it's gonna take you a while to get through anything big. Now, smaller diameter stuff, green wood, it's gonna be a little bit easier, I think. The reality is that, if you look out here, look at all the stuff that is hanging leaning, dry, dead, it is everywhere. Now it's spring, so this is all left over from winter, but the reality is I don't need to cut wood to start a fire. I can start a brush fire um, by collecting lots of small stuff and then bigger, bigger stuff into a pile and making a pretty decent fire that's gonna last a while. And then I can, um, obviously drag some larger stuff over to my fire and then feed it in slowly. I don't have to cut it. So these are kind of a fallacy. They, they're, they're not necessary. They put them in the kit because they think that you are gonna look at them and go, oh, it's a survival kit, it's got a survival wire saw. Problem is you really don't need it. So and the last item we have is this, it is the shovel. Now, you can tell by the size of this thing, it's not really a shovel. Um, it's more of a, I don't know, a gardening tool. Um, but it is probably the least impressive piece of gear in this kit. So it comes in this crappy little nylon case. Keep your other stuff clean, I guess. Don't need that. Two pieces, handle, well, guess what? Another compass. Wow, cool. It's hollow inside. So I guess you could store maybe your, those tinder sticks that it came with. We could put those in there, maybe some matches. Here it is. It's a shovel with, hey, look, another bottle opener. Serrated edge that is not sharp at all. Shovel is not sharp whatsoever. Screw this together. I 
the rubber handle rotates and comes off. So that's not good. And then this is similar to a GI tool where you would screw the collar up and that locks the position. So now in this position, you've got a tool to dig. Right? So there's that end. And then if you want to open this up and just use the shovel. Now the ground is, you look at this, look how much water is on the ground. So super easy digging. So for cat holes, um, this will work fine. Um, and the ground better be soft because I can guarantee you if this ground is hard and dry, this thing is gonna collapse like a, uh, like a $2 folding chair. Of course, that doesn't work. And I've already bent it, see? It's just kind of what I thought. There, it's super bent. Yeah, it's really bent. Yeah, it's, this thing is a turd. If you are marketing a product and you're calling it a survival kit, I think it needs to at least hit some basic, um, basic items that are going to help a person survive. So uh, there is no water collection or purification in this kit whatsoever. That is a number one item that should be in all kits is some type of water collection, even if it is a small tablet and um, a water collection bag, at least that's something. Of course, you can argue that a fire is a means of boiling water, but there's no container with this kit. So you really can't do that unless you bring another container with you. Um, there is no first aid, that is an issue. So if you are injuring yourself, um, you're not gonna have anything to help you. Um, tools, these kits are always um, super heavy on tools because those are cheap um, and they're cheap tools. Um, pocket knives, bottle openers, saws, um, cheap shovels, uh, whistles, compasses, all really super cheap China garbage, not even good stuff. I mean, some things from China are fine, but this stuff is just like the bottom of the barrel. And they are just taking from other kits and other sets, and then they're throwing them in this bag and, and marketing it as a survival kit. Um, you know, there's a, a few handy items in the kit, the head net, um, flashlight, the glow sticks, the fire tinder, the ferrocium rod, um, and the bag itself actually, I think is probably one of the better items. Nice feature, it has this rip away, molly panel so you can attach this to your larger ruck and then rip this off and then head out so if you want to spend thirty dollars on this kit um, by all means go go for it um, but if you do please go through it use some of this stuff get rid of the crap add more stuff to it and make it a better kit on your own um, you don't need to use the buy these pre-made kits they are typically garbage and this just proves it that this one is pretty much garbage um the pouch not bad um oh see i've already developed a hole in it so i take that back the pouch sucks look at that i i i don't even know how i got a hole in it so if you like this content um please do me a favor um, like and subscribe, share with people, and leave a comment down below and tell me what you think. Um, did this, any of this stuff appeal to you? Do you think any of it's good? 
or is it a complete pass? Check out the affiliate links down below. There will be a link um, to my Amazon store and to the Big Cartel website that has patches and stickers from Prepared Wanderer. And of course, um, the Prepared Wanderer Facebook group, huge, getting bigger every day. Lots of people on there sharing their, their packs and gear. Um, please consider joining that. And as always, thank you so much for watching The Prepared Wanderer.